So um, we we got uh, intro music for the show for the first time, and uh, I wanted to to uh, thank uh, Juniper Music in Dallas who put that together. It's pretty awesome. It's got the word shit in it, and it's got the f word in it, but bleeped. So kind of unique. Internet television can do whatever we want. Um, also wanted to uh, just thank Seneca College, who, uh, along with the Miami Ad School and um, the Art Center in in, in uh, Pasadena, is that in Pasadena? Yeah. They they uh, they've contributed a whole bunch of books and and uh, and a, and a whole lot of questions. We've gotten more questions for today's episode than um, any other of the previous three episodes. So it's, inc it's an incredible record. On a different day. We're really excited. And we've gone to a Wednesday, so it's just <laughs> spectacular. Um, and and uh, on the show today, we have uh, Tiffany Cosell. And Tiffany is a uh, creative director at the agency. She's been at the agency probably seven, seven years. years. I'm pretty good at guessing. Going on 10. <laughs> and and uh, and she works on Old Navy and uh, heads up heads up that team and, and all of that work. And, and uh, we were talking, and Tiffany said, "Wow, you know, <clears throat> if I did a show, I'd really like to do something on on portfolios and books and getting hired and you know how juniors can get into agencies." So um, we're doing it. Yes. Right. So for me, it was mostly to fill, um, answer a lot of my emails that I've been getting and slacking on. <laughs> so this is a good opportunity to like get a lot of questions um, answered and and help people that you know I know I got helped when I came out of school like I had a teacher that set up my interview with you and I had actually booked a ticket um, three months ahead of time I said I'm going to Miami on this day and I booked a ticket and I worked on my book and I gave myself that time limit and and actually didn't still didn't have an interview until I got off the plane and found out that if I could be there in an hour I could meet with you which I didn't know at the time that you were like kind of busy maybe and that you might <laughs> Have other stuff going on yeah. but for me it was um, really about making a plan ahead of time and and trying to make um, my book and me as, as important as the work that I had kind of put into it it's I put of... all this time into the work but I never really think about what's the campaign for me so I wanted to try to um, help other well we just cut to commercial um, <laughs> I should Forza, get a warning Forza Migliosi is an agency in, in, uh, in Hollywood California they sent me this t-shirt um, I like wearing other agency t-shirts because it's all about the love and I think there's plenty. I don't like the whole competitiveness thing so much. So uh, anyway, I'm a medium. If you've got an agency and you've got a t-shirt, I'm a medium. Sorry. Okay. That, and now we're back, <coughs> back to the show. So anyways, I, you know, I contacted my, my old school art center and of course we have a relationship with Miami Ad School. So I wanted to get us both kind of in a room talking about books what it takes and also just a lot of people ask me like you know what does it take to um, to get your book noticed versus what is it you know what do you put in your book now with all the mediums and you need to have everything and you need to know how to do online and this so yeah. I wanted to kind of answer a bunch of those questions and it's, on it's this show. always been the the, um, the thing that people if anytime I speak there will be a question about I think many, every show has had a question well in any time like any if I'm you know for the last 20 years <laughs> the question will always come up you know what should my portfolio be like how many pieces should be in it yeah. you know um, what kind of case should it be in should it be in a $200 case or should it be in a $20 case should it be in a box should it be you know should it be a link should and and unfortunately there aren't any real answers to yeah. those questions I think but but we can spend a bunch of time and talk about what does work, what doesn't work, and, 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 and why, what has worked and what isn't working anymore, and that's what we're going to try to do on the, yeah. on the show. I thought it might be fun to just start out and show a couple of books from here. Yeah. Um, I looked for my book, and I, I yeah, couldn't find but it. but we found probably the next... But this one is almost <laughs> as bad as my original This book. is from our ECD of digital, and it's a very high-tech black fake leather case, which ma many of you have probably seen before. This is Jeff Benjamin. Yeah, so maybe I'll book. find a, a couple of good ones. He actually has some web banners in here, so I thought I would that, almost fire him just after seeing Yeah, I know. It's you actually know? I mean, pretty scary. I know scary. you've won all these gold lions since you've been here, but... I went back and I looked at your original book and you're fired. No, maybe I'm my, my original book is terrible. Maybe so I'll just kind of do a little zoom in and show a couple of pieces and then we'll read a few lines because there are some gems in here. Yeah. 
We've got a postcard of some sort. I don't. Uh, it's for it's fairly an, well designed. It's an international festival of puppet theater. Yeah, that's fairly. a big client kind of clients he's working on these days. I think we have a Kinko printout of um, a baseball. It says baseball will never th be the same again. <laughs> it's pretty compelling, but, but right? But you know, the, the thing is, like he, um, you see, you see, you see. You work with what you what you've got, right? Yeah. So I mean, Jeff was obviously working a little bit, and he didn't have the greatest opportunities. He was doing the best best he could, and that's what this this is the one worth. So this is Jeff. There's a lot of glare, so I yeah. To, so this is Jeff's first web banner concept. It's just sort of a marker comp, but if you can read it here, it says balls. Got the balls. Got the balls to make the calls. Uh, it's for a hoops excite, madness contest. Zuzu hoops madness contest. Anyway, very little indication that this guy would go on to greatness. I think. Um, <laughs> so. I think it's a good. Yeah. It's a good. It's a good example of a couple things. One, it's a really good example of, um, of the, the, your book is probably always evolving, right? Yeah. And you shouldn't you shouldn't necessarily look at it as something that gets gets finished. But, you know, what Tiffany did where she said, I'm going to buy a ticket and I'm going to fly to where the agency is and I'm going to do this three months in advance and then I'm going to figure out in the meantime yeah. how to make a book. Because you have I've to have a deadline. <laughs> yeah, you create your own deadlines. And I think that's really important. So there's deadlines in school that, are, that occur. Um, but then after that, you got to make your own deadlines. There isn't yeah. going to be a portfolio review. There isn't going to be some moment and there, and there isn't going to be some teacher... Um, asking to see your your work and grade you, yeah. and and that's where I think a lot of people maybe fall down in the process, and they just don't continue to even after you're out of school find a partner, right? Work together, create create more and new work, and and just don't ever stop at that. Yeah, I mean, you know, because it's the same when you're working at an agency. It's like you always, you know, you have a deadline, and you work, and you will work and work until that deadline comes. Right. So if you don't right. set those deadlines, then it will never end, you know, because right. you always want to make your work better. But I think you have to just not be so stressed out that that's the end of it, you know, that there's another deadline where you can then make it better and put a new piece in it and not right. get so attached to ideas, just like right. we, you know, do here. It's like you can't think everything is this thing that can't go away, that you can always make it better. Yeah. Um, do you want to show Rob Riley's book? Uh, yeah, this one is a... Rob Riley, uh, do you want to show it? Yeah, we'll yeah. show Rob Riley's. It's a triple threat. <laughs> Rob Riley refers to himself as triple threat um, because he played in a guitar, in a, or he sang in a band. He played He's soccer. A, he was a bartender, and he, he was sang a in a band, so just, and he was a soccer he star. He saw himself as, in terms of dating and women, triple threat. So he actually included some chicken fries. And his, because his portfolio. I, this is his recent portfolio, actually, because he invented the chicken fries. Right. So he wanted to. He's not here, and nice. I think we took his poster down. So I wanted to make sure, you know, he represented. This was a mixtape of his band songs. Pretty cool. And then he gave one other. This was, I think, his most compelling piece. <laughs> <laughs> So, you know, you can take a lot of different approaches. I think what was nice, you know, about his is that you have food in there. I mean, that's a pretty cool it's, thing yeah. to show. It's nice Definitely to Definitely surprising. To, Since you, you can add sense to a book, which makes a, a much more exciting portfolio. If you can eat the portfolio, that's good. <laughs> um, and then I was going to show a little bit of mine and maybe a little bit of Yoko's. Yours is real. Mine that is wasn't real. Rob's real yeah, portfolio. Yeah, that was not real. Yeah. Um, Yours is real. Mine is real. Mine. Some of my stuff's missing, but this is literally... I actually have only showed this portfolio once, and that was here. <laughs> I never actually interviewed anywhere else. That was one of the else. questions, actually, is when's the last time yeah, you showed and then that, Yeah, I saw that. So this was here seven years ago, and this has been sitting in my office, and I think actually it's had some pieces stolen out of it, so they might be actually being you know, shopped around. In other portfolios. <laughs> and this was during the time where it was really important to make your own case. You had to get really creative. Like, it was all about how cool could the case be that you put it in. Yeah. And that was one of the questions that's come up is like, you know, how, what is the importance of the case? It, you can't really say what the importance yeah. of the case is. Is there any part, if, if you think it's important, it's important, right? Yeah. And, and is there any part of your presentation that you don't want to get creative with and 
and then you just have to decide yes and there's a reason why I guess and if the work is so amazing in it and it's a really crappy case that's kind of cool too so you never know it, it could be I mean it could yeah. be part of it but I would just I think all every aspect is you trying to illustrate your creativity you're not trying yeah. to you're not trying to show a good case you're just trying to illustrate your creativity like um, Dave Schiff's portfolio he bought um, just kind of a regular standard portfolio or maybe it was a suitcase was um, and then he went to a, a shop and got a header, bought a header off of a car, and actually had the 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 automotive shop bolt the header onto the sides of the portfolio. And the portfolio weighed literally like 110 pounds. Which is know? actually kind of a point where it's make it you too. You know, like I like little it, matching things and in cute outfits. It was outfits. him. It was yeah. it was him. And he could carry it. His muscles could and carry it. And he's strong it. enough to carry it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so, and then, you know, a lot of people also ask kind of like what... But it's hard to miss. It's like, yeah. well, hey, what's that thing, box with the header on, the chrome header on the side, yeah. you know? And then, you know, I know when I was putting my book together, I would literally get people to say, don't put it, you're, you're an art director, don't put writing in there, you know, or don't put this type of thing, or don't show your design, you know, they want to see that you're an art director. And for me, it's like I didn't want to work at a place where I only had to do one thing, so yeah. it was important for me to... Um, try to show what I could do, what I like to do, and that I had a lot of different interests. So I had, you know, short stories that I'd written. I think one of these is called Please Don't Have Sex With My Grandma, which, you know, gave a little bit I about my person yeah. personal life. Like, it was about me thinking my grandma was a call grandma because she lives in Pahrump, Nevada. So, it was, you know, it, you got a little insight into to my life. I mean, your, your book definitely did the thing. Like, I couldn't, I, I can't remember a specific piece from Tiffany's book, but what Tiffany's book did, which is my favorite thing, is it had it had great work in there, but I really got a sense of the person. So before you know, I met her, and also while we were interviewing, more importantly, you're taking me through the book, and you can't help but talk about the things you're passionate about, and what you want to do, and why you did this, and what you were thinking when you did that. Yeah. You know. And that's what you want to have happen. Yeah. You know, it's when it's just a parade of, of ads, whether they're fake ads or real ads or spec ads. Yeah. It, it it can be it can be enough, no doubt. But when it when it starts to illustrate the person, that's yeah. those are the great books. I yeah. Think. And I, you know, for me too. Your book was really good, so it's a kind of a terrible example. Yeah. Well. Yeah. I got a job, so. You did. But these were funny. <laughs> yeah, like, these used to be little, they were little baby things. And I happened to have Jeff Hicks, who is the president of uh, Crispin, and he had just had triplets. And so I had three of these little onesies that said deduction on it. And he happened to walk in the room, so I gave them to him. So now I have the president of Crispin <laughs> right. kids, kids wearing my ad. So I thought yeah. that was a pretty good thing. Yeah, so, and you know, and thing. I wanted, I like, I get bored easily. Maybe it's my personality. Maybe I have ADD. I'm not sure. But I like a lot of stuff to, I like it to be a little bit of a show and tell. Yeah. And like, you know, you flip through so many pages after pages. And when there's just something that stops you and has something a little bit different in it, it really helps to capture and, my attention. And, and in some ways, and in some ways, so, so Tiffany also had, the thing that was stolen was this book. She had created this hand-done book. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and it was, I, I think you even like stitched, well, the, had was, to stitch the book, Bible, right? It was made like a Bible. It was yeah. called Antique Future. And actually, it was in a design book class, but I wanted to turn that class into a class that I could use for advertising. So instead of designing um, pages, I said, why don't I do ads for the stories? So instead of a table of contents, I turned the entire table of contents, each page, into an ad for one of the stories in the book. Yeah. So I came, you know, we got to do all these really interesting ads, like, um, you know, once it was about one of them was about the future, and I had like, um, like an email telegram service where you can email your past and future self. You know, I had like just random stuff. I had um, a, an ad with a it was a cross between. A, a biblical story and a, um, a Britney Spears biography because someone had written it. So I had this thing that you tore open. It was Whitney, uh, Britney in a nun's costume, and you could tear right. the page, and then she was like a stripper underneath. So just kind of had some fun with demonstrating the, each of these stories and trying to get someone to read each one of them. And I, and I think the thing that it, for me when I was interviewing, I don't remember a lot of the details. What I what I really remember was, oh my God, this chick really is into getting it done right. Like there's no level of detail you weren't willing to go to. Like the the hand the fact that she by hand was stitching this thing, as well as the concepts being in there. Yeah. But that was just like a level of of 
of creative care that, as, as a person who's hiring somebody, my sense was there's no way they can't be good, right? Yeah. And, and, the, and the, other, the other thing it did, and this is, this is one of the questions too, is how do you know who's done what book, right? Like, and we don't is the answer. We see portfolios and we see the same campaigns in three, sometimes four portfolios, sometimes more. Yeah. And we can't know and we don't do any homework to try to figure out who did what because it's impossible as far as I, I can think. I don't know how I would do that sleuthing. But... Um, you kind but, of you hope among all those pieces you can try to get a story together of the person. Well, you could, you can, yeah. you can. But I think that what 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 happens is you go with the the person who's who's filled in the rest of the portfolio in the best way, who's yeah. been creative about everything. It's so again, it's like okay, you're going to have some good pieces in the book. Yeah. But how does the book tell the story of Tiffany? You know, like. That that's really that's really critical. In the in the days of Jeff and the days of me, you know, my portfolio was just a lot of you know nonsense, and it wasn't like you were going to get hired to be an art director or writer anyway. You were going into the studio, yeah. or the dark room. I went into the dark room. You know, that's that's just where you were going. It 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 didn't matter. Yeah. So it was all about working your way up. Today it's a little bit different. So that you know, that that potential of the portfolio to really illustrate who you are and the pressure on it, it's much higher than it was. Yeah, yeah. there's so many things you can put into it. I think that's another yeah. point too, and like how much is it you and your personality and the, and the way you get noticed versus what the work is? Yeah. Because we have, you know, people, a couple of the questions were about, you know, when, do you, when does it cross the line, right? When does it become stalking? Yeah, and and I think you know stalking we've seen actually has worked if like it that's works. your personality <laughs> and your so creative Ev stalker. So Evan, Evan Evan Fry, start, um, he sent his book in. We reviewed his book. It was okay, and we were interested. But we sent him a letter back that said, you know, you're not exactly what we're looking for right now. We hope you keep in touch and keep us aware of changes to your portfolio. Right? It was a but it was a form letter. But it was a nice yeah. form letter. So Evan started. He pretended like it was a real letter to him, almost yeah. like a jilted lover. <laughs> and and he started um, like like uh, sending photographs of not himself, but just of weird things, and sending little tchotchkes and, and love and, notes. And when are you going to write him? You when promised. When are you going to write me? You, you said you wanted to be in touch, Alex. I'm doing what you said. I'm keeping in touch. It was fairly scary, and and and. And so finally, he sent one where he had Xeroxed the original form letter, and he had blacked out his name um, and any of the other details in marker. And I thought, well, you know, the way the way uh, copies work, they lay down a little pattern. So I, I, we had a photographer. I said, how much can you zoom in on this, and can you get the light to hit it at just the right way to reveal the name? And we did, you know, because I was sort of terrified of this person at this point. <laughs> so it and it comes up just plain as day. It's Which used, we still are. Yeah. It's just it's just a big Evan, right? So it says Evan and and I took the and I took the letter or I took that photograph, put it in a um, unmarked envelope, sent it back to the P.O. box that he had been using to send us stuff and it just said something like you're busted. Um, <laughs> and and or it may have said nothing. I think it was just a thing. So at that point the gig was up, and and uh, and and we started talking in, in a more normal fashion. And I was afraid of him enough that I thought, "Well, keep your enemies closer, right?" So I got to hire this guy. It was a creative way of stalking. I mean, like if he had really just been standing yeah. outside your window, yeah. like and and he didn't send bullets <laughs> or anything with my name. Yeah, on Yeah, you know. Yeah. So and that's where it becomes like a campaign. Like he, you, he proved that he could put enough thought and a you know plan out a way to get attention and get noticed and that's kind of what we're always doing for our clients and that well. and that's the that's the you know one of the one of the questions that we see a lot is also um, you know should I send a book or a link you could send a book you could send yeah. a link but can you do a campaign to get hired right so many people take this shotgun approach because it's convenient digitally now you can you can send the same note to 500 people, but yeah. we're going to be able to, you can tell the difference. Other people say, I'm on a campaign to get hired at these five places or four places or three, here's three places. Here's what I'm going to do and plan it and out. And here's what yeah. I'm going to do. And, and since that's the job, 
if you if you illustrate that, yeah, really has a big effect, I think, on on mm. potential like Chris um, Kale hires. There's another guy here that I mean, almost like that's his best piece in his book was was his approach to how he was getting hired here, and he decided, you know, Alex is Which just is not how it should be. But <laughs> that's not exactly right. But you know, it was a it was a demonstration of his potential. Yeah. Um, and he actually used Twitter, which you had just been getting involved with, yeah. and um, and I, you know, he put a spin on it where it wasn't just I'm going to write Alex every day and bug him and be annoying. He said, I'm he got everyone involved he got with everyone bugging and me. He got everyone and he donated to a charity. So right. I think it was like the first 200 tweets, he would donate a dollar um, to the charity of your choice if you would um, tweet Alex or Jeff Benjamin um, to get him hired. And, you know, and that put a nice spin on it where, okay, this is like a more thought out idea. It's not just yeah. really bugging you every day, but it's yeah. figuring out a, a campaign around, around bugging that actually works. To totally, totally. <laughs> So a question um, that's come in is TV and radio in a student book. Um, I mean, I, I have some, that was, a, again, like, there's, there's no hard and fast rules, but one, you know, one question that was similar to that was how, um, if you put in TV, how polished should it be? Yeah. Right? <clears throat> it's how polished can you make it? Yeah, I think right? it depends, like, too, like, you know, I think it's, a, it's not so much about having radio and having TV. Like, you could come up with this amazing radio campaign only, yeah. and, that, and that was the, the idea that really works great, and then it's, like, a great idea for a particular client, right? But, see, a lot of the questions, how important are digital ed executions? Radio and TV, how many pieces do I need in, in a book? And, and yeah. it's sort of, that misses the, a couple points, yeah. right? One point is... Um, that that you are trying to make a portfolio like like Tiffany did I guess that would only get you hired in the place that you want to work at too right you don't really want to create a portfolio that is the the, the perfect standard right so it becomes you, like a like a you know a piece well, everyone you go you go into the pool you go into the pool of of yeah I can I, my job and what I do is interchangeable with everyone too. I wanted to get a job you know? at one place not kind of maybe get a job at like a hundred places yeah you know yeah and so so what are you really into like are you really into TV and radio then maybe you should do an all TV yeah. and radio book are you really into print people worry is print still appropriate what if you're really into it it'll be totally appropriate because we're not we at least are not looking for a print campaign that we're then going to run. We're not looking for a, someone who has expertise in print. You're looking for someone who is wildly creative. That's all that really matters, right? Yeah. I will hire anyone who's wildly creative. I mean, we hired some guys that that most of their portfolio was was like fabricated, different things that had been welded together and woodwork and stuff like that, you know, and. They, we really don't need that. We don't yeah. need. We ha, we have some welding abilities here, but like <laughs> they were covered on welding. You, you probably know? had a few ideas for him to do. <laughs> but it was. It, but the but the book really yeah. was very creative, and yeah. so so you know you take you take a chance on that. And it's just I think it's finding the right executions for the right ideas and the right clients. You know, it's it's not. I think I look at campaigns, and a lot of times it's like everyone has the iPhone app, and it's really just the print ad. You know, put on the iPhone. It's like a picture of an right. iPhone, really, right. versus an idea that is for iPhones. So I think it's, you know, really nailing what the best executions are, and then maybe you just show the best ones. It's not about having to cover your bases on all it's the different a, yeah, it's not. It's not a checkbox, right? Yeah. Like, you you and your passions, I don't think, are a checkbox. You can't make a list, and you're going to get advice to check some boxes, right? Yeah. And it's not bad advice, but you have to evaluate, is that a box that I can I can check with a lot of authority and with a lot of a, a passion. And if I can't, then, you know, maybe there'll be some boxes that I don't check. Yeah. You know? What do you want to do next? Questions or look at some books? Um, maybe a couple of questions. I had, I, had one, on. I, had one, I had one just, like, um, thought, which is the... Uh, sometimes you're being interviewed, just, so you, just to make people understand the interview process a little bit, too. Sometimes you're being interviewed, and you can tell within... 10, 20 seconds, right, whether the person's the person, Yeah. you know, but you still go through with the interview, and the reason why you go through with the interview is because you really want to offer the person somebody. They've taken the time to yeah. be here, you've sat down, and, and so I would just say, 
just try to learn in those interviews. Don't necessarily worry that much about the job in all the interviews. You can really use the fact that you're meeting people to, to just get smarter. Yeah. And the reason, the reason most of the time, not, I don't know about most of the time, often though, they're, they already know they're not hiring you and they're going to sit down and they're going to talk about stuff. Yeah. Um, I think you want to make it, you know, you're needing to interview them a bit too. I mean, it's about finding the right fit for, for sure. both of you. And I feel like sometimes people will come in and interview and they'll just want the job and they'll sit there and watch you look at the work, but they aren't really thinking, is this right for me? Yeah. And it's like, you got to, you know, you got to want to be there too. But it's you're going to have some bad interviews. Yeah. I don't know if you had any bad interviews, but most people have one just like gnarly interview, it seems like, you know, and it's, and it's, um, I don't know. You, you tend to take it personally. I would just suggest don't take it personally because it, it's more about them than it is about you. Yeah. Um, Dave Schwartz, who's one of the creative directors here, his first interview, and we had gone to school together. He was interviewing for the for the uh, for a studio position. He's getting his book ready, right, and he's frantic, and you know, whoosh, cuts off the tip of his finger, right, oh. as he's prepared mounting something. And it actually flew in the air and like landed like the and Should then put it in his book. <laughs> so he didn't put it in his book. He put it back on the end of his finger and taped it up. It actually grew back. If you do it quickly, you can get it to grow back. Who knew? <laughs> so, but Dave shows up for the interview. He's got this bandage like this, this big white bandage on his finger. You know, he's walking in there, young guy with the bandage in his portfolio, and the and the woman who interviewed him um, was pretty nasty. And one of the things she said was, if anyone in my studio cuts themselves, I fire them that day, that instant. So, <laughs> yeah, you're like, okay. It's a burn. Like, I guess, yeah, it's a burn. <laughs> and, um, and, uh, but later, uh, and this is, this is, you know, good advice for people who are, who are interviewing people. Later, Dave had, you know, risen through the ranks at the agency and that design studio had come up for a job and that woman was, you know, trying to get work out of the agency and he didn't forget her lack of kindness, you know. <laughs> and and that you hear those stories over and over where where it's important for both sides to be really respectful in the process. But also realize that, you know, it's not you. She was having a bad day. It wasn't it wasn't it's okay to cut yourself. It's you know, and it's okay not to get hired. My my dad um, apparently he uh, he had done an interview with a with a Miami ad guy uh, Bruce Turkell, and Bruce came into my dad's design studio to interview, and uh, and he had had a horrible interview with somebody else in town who was you know who we wanted to impress, and, and the guy was I guess particularly nasty, and my dad told him the story. He said, well you know like three years ago that guy was getting coffee for us, you know. <laughs> So it just made him feel better, yeah. right? You're, everyone ends up somewhere. <laughs> and, 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 and I don't feel, you know, it's easy to have empathy. Just, you know, and everybody's, again, everybody's different. But know that the person on the other side of the table, they're not very different from you. They're not very far separated from you. Yeah. So although they have the job and they seem to have the power and the dynamic, I can remember very vividly being in that chair and how nervous I was and, and, yeah. and how, um, how, how, in some ways you feel like I'll never get a job, yeah. right? And, and I think most people that you're going to interview with still have that empathy and feel like, yeah, that was three weeks ago I was in that exact position. Yeah. Should we read, uh, do you want to look at, a lot of people are asking about produced work versus Oh, which, which versus is better? Work. Yeah. It's a good question. You go first. I honestly don't. I just want to see great ideas, and, and I feel like it's not about it being produced. I think a lot of the work that you can make that's not produced still shows that you can craft and that you know how to like art direct a photo shoot, um, even more so because you did it on your own. So I'm, I am never even ask or care which stuff is produced or not. I just want to see what you feel is like your best ideas and the work that you're proud of. Yeah. Do you think there's any pressure as you've been in it longer to have some produced work? I think um, there's definitely, it is it's a little weird if you've been out there for seven years, you know, and you have all your student work still. It's, yeah. And then it's more, instead of the conversation being about the work, it's like, wh what have you been doing and why and, and where are you in, in your life right now yeah. that you want to come here to try to change things? And I think everyone deserves a chance. And if there are good ideas there, maybe they, you know, 
their mom was sick and they had to like do something else. Yeah. You know, I think everyone has their story. I, I remember we hired a, a guy years ago who had he was forty. He had been an account executive and he took like a year off to create a portfolio yeah. and switch careers in, into creative. Yeah. And um, and his book was great. And obviously nothing was produced, but he was a 40-year-old guy who had been in advertising a long time. Yeah. You know, not everyone will take that winger, but, but I, do, I do think in general the, the, the idea of something produced that's not as good is, is probably better left out of the book. Yeah. Yeah. And also, you know, just amount, the amount of executions. I feel like sometimes people will pad and have extra versions of something or feel like they need four versus three or not have the one just putting the best things in there I think is important too not just filling it up to show that a campaign is big yeah. when the ideas aren't good do you have any do, do you yeah, have any that um, you like that you want to show I think I have a few that I like this one I think um, I thought it would be good to, to talk about this one's from Miami Ad School Helena Chu and she just had some stuff that um, that that just got my attention and made me laugh so maybe we'll so there's no fancy case on it. Yeah, right? just, this is just a you know printed book, and most Which of these are. Fine. She might have a fancy case, but we said we wouldn't return them. So, <laughs> so. well, and that's yeah, that's a pro problem with fancy yeah. cases. But I am what I, like I liked about hers is sometimes I feel like there's a lot of copy and description and and explaining of, of work, and I, I'm just. I, I don't read it, you know, and I want to be able to e either get the idea quickly or have just a bit of, of explanation when but it's a more complicated But your book had a ton idea. of copy. Well, I don't mean, I don't mean I'm like long, long copy ads are fine. I mean like to, uh, just to describe the idea. It's like when we were doing award show videos or whatever. You try to keep it a minute. If you turn it into a five-minute video to explain an idea. For sure, but there's somebody out there that, yeah. you know, their description becomes the most interesting well, thing. Well, that's, you, you know, know, that's when there are no rules, but... Yeah. I, I tend to like, you know, to make the idea simple and, and communicate clearly. Que you, you find some things in there. there the idea to, uh, question is, is the idea to customize your book towards the employer we're meeting. I would say customize the book to you, right? So yeah. you, don't, you don't want to customize the book. Um, I don't think you do, unless you really don't have that much to offer that's unique. If you really can just morph into any job, into any situation, then I would say customize to the employer. But if, but if you feel you know really good about certain aspects of your book, keep keep those in and find use the book to find the for, to help you find the space and the place where they value the same kind of thinking. You know, my my first job I, in advertising, I would do. Um, on the weekends, I worked in the studio, so on the weekends I would do campaigns. I'd be like, hey, they're pitching this boat account or they're pitching this other account. So I'd, so I'd work on, on campaigns and, um, and I'd come in on the Monday and I'd say, you know, I know you guys are working on this. I had these ideas and I'd present these ideas. And they always hated them. And, and they would go through all of these reasons why they hated the work. And, and, uh, and they were really smart reasons, right? So. My takeaway after about six months of this was I am way too stupid for advertising. I mean, you've got to be so smart. This is an incredibly complex business. That, Which we that, now know isn't true. It's not true. It's not that complex. <laughs> so so, so I, just, my, I, I, feel, I felt like, oh, I can't do this. And then I met Chuck Porter, and I showed him the same stuff. And he, he, his take on it was, this is brilliant. This is, like, you know, this is the kind of stuff that I want to do more of. So I just changed places, right? Yeah. It wasn't that the other place was wrong either or that they were not intelligent. Really bright, definitely right, doing their thing. But then was here was this other guy who wanted to do this other thing. So you want your portfolio, and that wasn't my portfolio. That was sort of, actually, that was the portfolio that I developed while I was working. That helped me find the right person yeah. and the right space to, to align with other people that thought like I did. Yeah. Um, want me to show this? Yeah. So this, there were a couple ideas that just I thought were fun. Um, this was for um, Beatles, the rock band Beatles, and it was kind of um, it became a contest, like a social media contest, where it was Jesus versus the Beatles, and um, Beatles winning. So they actually did some like live billboards, um, an online kind of site that just proved how crazy, like how much of a god. Um, the Beatles were. So I thought that was kind of a fun thing, a different way of looking at um, the rock band. You would think that it might just be about rocking out, 
Yeah. And in this case, it just proved kind of the power of the Beatles and and Beatles fans. I thought this nice. was. I thought this was kind of fun. Um, one thing we do a lot of is we look at product. We actually get involved in the pro. You know, look at the product, look at what it really is. Yeah. And they noticed this in the Teddy Grahams box that there were two different kinds of bears. Mm. One of the bears had arms, arms up, up and, and arms down. One, one had arms down. So they decided to make the campaign about like what is the like the bear with the arms up, the happy bear versus yeah. the kind of bummed out bear. That's a great idea. So they did um, this these two different boxes. You know, this one says my box is full of happiness and the other one is my my box is full of my box is full but it fills half empty <laughs> so he's the sad little gray. bear <laughs> and it's gray and there's there's uh, rain and tears and you know had the different bears against each other i did five pull-ups i pulled m up my pants <laughs> so just the little sad bear and it it just made me rethink teddy grams like totally. i never really i li i like teddy grams but i never really noticed it that gives you a new relationship yeah, and it makes i might have done a different campaign but it definitely yeah. is like the insight and and the it, it shows it shows a lot of creativity is being able to observe things that other people yeah. can't observe right yeah to be able to back out of your like the accepted culture, right? Which is, oh, all Teddy Grahams are the same, or yeah. you know, whatever, whatever, whatever we all accept, and then finding those details, yeah, really good. And it's just, it would be easy to just be like, they're cinnamon and yummy, and you know, they're easy to snack on or whatever. Those things that like a lot of cookies are. Yeah. So there was just something about this that made me want to like relook at Teddy Grahams. We well, you put milk on them, don't you? It's a cereal. No, it's not a cereal. What? It could be. You could, well, that's what's interesting about I've Teddy Grahams. I've been putting grams. milk on them and eating them as a cereal. You can eat them as a cereal. Well, they come in a small box. Typically, cereal comes in a larger box. Weird. But but you can you can dip them with milk, but it's easier sometimes to throw them in there because they're so small. There's so much to learn um, about the Teddy Graham. And this was a fun one, just like, you know, chap. this is a chapstick. It's just for everyone with a mouth. So just easy statement about chapstick but they use some kind of fun characters to demonstrate ones we know that mm -hmm. don't have a mouth and they're sad yeah just kind of some fun do you think ways. that book has too many things in it um put it on the spot i feel like it's not too it has another one it has slightly too many things i'm gonna say well what i think is it has too maybe much. too many um versions of things too many executions do you have to have three executions no per? no now, what makes you say that? Because someone would be like, Cause why? Because it's just it's a very thick? common thing to... Yeah, but what makes you think this one has too many? Why did I think it had too many? Yeah. It was just a little thick. It's thicker paper. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, you want to do a question? I'll get another book ready while we maybe do a question. This book was, wasn't bad, too. Okay. I don't know if you had something to talk about, though. Um, So I think, you know, one of the questions, again, about it seems to come up here, too, the, sort of, you know, Facebook and, and Twitter, how important is that and and, uh, and how much do you need to see that stuff? Again, I, I, wanna, I probably want to see from some people some thinking in those areas, but I, but I don't want to see it from everybody and I don't want to see it from people who don't care, you know. There, there are a lot of really important parts of, of advertising that... I don't particularly care about, and, and you know, in some ways, CPB doesn't care about. So, you know, we've talked about this before, but product placement, really, you know, potentially an important part of advertising. Not a personal passion, not an agency passion. So we don't, we don't spend time with it. Um, so you got to make sure that you're you're passionate about it if you're going to put it in your book. Um, I was just going to bring up a couple of these. These two had stuff that was like personal work. So I know there was a lot of questions about do you put personal stuff in there. Corey, this is oh, Corey yeah. Taylor from... That's a good question, the personal stuff. Yeah, Corey yeah. Taylor from Art Center had some spray paint. They do like spray painting, you know, and acrylic paintings and wanted to show some stuff there. This guy I thought was pretty interesting. And do you like that? Or I like it. I like it too. Because I always... My thing is like I want to slightly be jealous of whoever I'm interviewing and not want to hire them slightly. You know, just a little bit of me doesn't want to hire them. I feel like that kind I of... I don't even understand what you're saying. I just mean like if you're I... If you're I, evil. Well, no. That's just evil. Just, there's a little a human, evil inside you. There's a little you. evil in me that, that at first I'm scared. If I'm scared a little bit, like right. I might not have a job because of this person, then yeah. I know that it's probably someone I need to hire. So For sure. I need that like insecurity sometimes to like find someone really great. And do you follow that or do you just not hire them? I hire them. Oh, okay. <laughs> then I realize, wait, I'm a creative director and I don't have to worry about it. Right. I can have them my work job, for me. My, my job will be easier. <laughs> exactly. I can work so, less. Yeah. This was one, this guy, uh, Eric Roller from Miami Ad School, had um, 
had his he's really good. But there good. are people who who you who might intimidate. Yeah, yeah, you might intimidate them with your book and they may not like that feeling and you may have a bad interview because of it. Yeah. So This was one he um this was Eric Roller from Miami Ad School that had um he has his etch a sketch skills in here. Like and that's a pretty I mean I've never been good at etch a sketch. So those I are, thought yeah, those they're are pretty amazing. amazing and he's turned them into like kind of art pieces and yeah. So I thought that was kind of a fun thing. Well, I also think what it illustrates when you put your personal work in there is that you have this abundance of creativity. Yeah. You just, you can't, you don't want to stop. It doesn't turn off. You know, it keeps finding ways to get out. And you never know when you need an Etch-a-Sketch sketch for an ad and who's going to do it. Well, <laughs> you never know. A lot of what we do, you need comps photographed, you know. And one of the questions that has come up a few times is about account executives and planners. Like, should those people have portfolios? Yeah. Um, I actually asked Colin last night because I had gotten a couple of questions, and he said they should have portfolios, and usually it's um, case studies based on, you know, figuring out a particular product or client. Um, he gave me a couple of examples, but... I think that, I mean, it doesn't always happen, and not yeah. all the account people or, or planners we hire ha have portfolios. But it really shows what I what I what I like, which is you felt connected to the work. Yeah. Right. So the things that you worked on, it was your product. So you may not have been the art director or the writer, but it was your product. And Jeff Steinauer was the first, um, who's a partner and one of the original partners at the agency, was first uh, account guy I ever saw that had a portfolio. And he and he was you know. I was confused. I'm like, why do you have a portfolio? I thought you were an account guy. And he's like, well, you know, I realized in school I wanted to be creative, but I, in the end I didn't think that I really was good enough to, to do it. But, you know, but I just, it, it illustrates who I am. And I, to me that was brilliant. Yeah. So he and he probably was good enough. He was also yeah. saying just things that show your thinking, you know, like did you write something? Do you have some, you know, some way to show how you thought about things? Like it doesn't necessarily have to relate to work, right. but to get a sense of how they think and the, and the kinds right. of things that um, but I, But I, you know, there's, there's one where I actually think a planner with um, work that's just pretty good in their book has an edge over a planner who just tells you where they went to school and what they worked on. Yeah. You know, if they took the time to like show the pieces that came out of the process and and you can feel that pride and that pride of ownership, that that's a huge thing for, for a planner or an account person yeah. both. Yeah. Um, most important thing to remember before sending out a portfolio. What is the most important, the correct address? Who you sent it to, yeah. <laughs> Making who, sure you put man. the right name on it. That's a good one though, the who. So I get a lot of, I get a lot of portfolios, I get a lot of emails from people, and, and I'm the wrong person to send it to for a lot of reasons. Yeah. One, I don't, I don't hire, right? So I don't hire the creators anymore. That's a problem. Two, I would never tell somebody here to hire somebody because it undermines their authority and, and if they're brilliant, I want them doing their job the best they can. So I just, I would never do that. Um, and three, even the people, even if you're talking about Andrew and, and Rob, I, this is something that I've seen over and over. People will try to shoot above Andrew and Rob and then, hey, you know, and sometimes I'll forward the book, but it's not to great effect, yeah. right? What You're really, always like it's the book, like it's Alex's friend. You know, it's a little yeah. bit of that where you feel Thank like you. maybe you have to hire him. <laughs> Which you know that you don't, so you don't, right? So it's got this weird dynamic, and then you know you don't, so you don't. So it's just yeah. a bad way to come in. What really works is when you go further down. So you find people in the agency that are other art directors, other yeah. writers, and you start cultivating relationships with with them and some of the ACDs and 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 the and the work bubbles up with a sort of sponsorship right so yeah. it's like you know I know this person I've been talking to him a while I've been seeing their portfolio feels like progress. that happens a lot here just but that's friends that's, that's, the, that's yeah. the way but I, and I think that's probably true in a lot of places because then you come in with a recommendation yeah right and it's a really and it's a and, and that whole even if you even if you haven't known them that long it, you get the feeling that this is an endorsement yeah and sometimes we'll ask you know we'll say okay are you endorsing this person yeah which is a whole nother yeah. level it's did like did you just get a connection or are yeah. you saying this is the and one then people will be like whoa whoa like endorse <laughs> wait a minute because that sounds well, that like, like i'm putting yoko. my reputation on the line yoko yeah. is from art center and she um came here through 
um, a planner actually. Her dad knew a planner, and her dad talked to the planner, and then talked to me and said, you know, there's there's someone from your school that's a big fan, and of course yeah. that's going to get, you know, I'm like, wow, someone's a fan of me. Right. Well, that's pretty cool. Like I felt like it was my obligation to like help her. Right. And then she would not, she would not send her book to me before she was like, I'm flying myself out, and that was like reminded me of what I had done. So yeah. there was something in that that I just felt like, okay, well, I'm going to help this person out. But I told her, I'm like, I don't know what your work is. I can't promise you anything. Like I can't. Yeah you yet until I see it right, right. and she came out and showed me her work and you know like you guys happen to be available and yeah. she got hired like the same day and that was yeah. even surprising to me but things like that can work out if you go get that right person that yeah. can that can help Do you, you have her portfolio yeah I have her stuff right um, here right yeah and her portfolio is a box she also has this oh okay she has the pretty big yeah metal case thing so she um she had been actually in in Yoko was one of those that had been out of school for a few years and hadn't had a job or anything, like just kind of been you, floating. You can't say that. <laughs> well, I did. Um, and she, um, but she wasn't really sure. She, her, she's a little quirky. Her work was a little bit different. Yeah. Hadn't really found like her match, kind of like what you were saying earlier. And in some, and in some ways, I still wonder, like she's, she's radically talented. But if you if you go through her portfolio, I think the thing she gets most excited about is her plush toys. Yeah. And and to me, I think that her like that's ultimately probably where she should go. You know, I probably should, I can't say that either. But but advertising may not be the thing for her, right? Because she just you just she'll she'll get pretty animated about the advertising. But when she get starts talking about the plush toys, you can just feel the energy. I don't have her plush toys, but I, I have. I have the. She had a Hello Kitty book. Um, That's you and know. It was pretty. It was plush. It's really. Toy it's it's in that area though. And it, she wrote like, what if um, Hello Kitty had a mouth? Like, what would she say? You know. So she wrote all these little st stories. This first line says, "So read the fuck on." <laughs> 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 and like you know, it just has all. It has this history of the vibrator um, from Hello Kitty, it, and she's this quiet like little Very person sweet, that you yeah. would never imagine this coming out of so it yeah. just showed this nice contrast in what you had in front of you and her personality really yeah. came out through it but she also didn't get hired for two years so this may be a book that we have to be suspicious of you know? <laughs> exactly <laughs> and and but but I think uh, you know also to the point though is like the book actually moved her into a place where where she could do more you know we were looking for books yeah. like this and she you had know, great crafting and, you know, nice design. She really, you could tell she cared about how she put things yeah, together. a lot of passion. And, and also just, you know, she was one of those art directors, Ooh, especially. That's a good question. Uh oh, gosh, should I stop? Easier to get a job as a team or by yourself? Hmm. I don't know. What do you, we used to never hire teams. I like by yourself. I yeah. think it's a lot. I think it's easier. It's definitely, you can tell who you're hiring. You know, sometimes it's hard when there's two people and one yeah. person might personality kind of dominates that and you're not really sure what the other person is so yeah. it's definitely hard to kind of get a sense of of the work and sometimes we break teams up you know so you really need to know what kind of work each one of them does yeah I think so yeah. I, I don't know if it's everywhere though that might be different in other places no I think it's probably different in different places yeah. but yeah it, it, on, in most cases the team's going to get broken up at some point anyway yeah yeah um, um, and it's also when you interview with a team, one of the things that's difficult is one person will do 90% of the talking, right? Yeah. So it winds up being an interview with one person. Uh, and he then, likes this. And you, yeah, like, exactly. Yeah, it's like Penn and yeah. Teller interview. I'm, I'm the quiet one. <laughs> you know, I'm Silent Bob. Um, so, you know, they, they, that's just the dynamic And probably the quiet one is the talented one. <laughs> I, I always think a good team is made up of someone who's very energetic and someone who's very thoughtful. Right, so one person is driving the team forward, making sure that they get stuff done, making sure that they, you know, just keep working, keep thinking. And the other person is just, you know, kind of the thinker. Now, so I was not the thinker, apparently. You are an engine. Like I think of <laughs> yeah. you as an engine, and and so um, some people are both. You can be a thinker and an engine. But I think I've evolved my think thinker. But teams that don't seem to work is if you put two thinkers together, right? That they they just sit there and nothing much happens. You can put two engines together with some good thoughts and and that'll work. But two two thinkers is kind of a de recipe for disaster. How do you show interactive work in your book? Best you've seen. 
It's kind of hard. Yeah, there's. I think the best, uh, really, the the best is to actually have the links. The show links, it, yeah. yeah. So so it's nice when you can, if you've got a portfolio, and then you can go to the links. That that works well. And then when you, it seems like a lot of people who interview com seem to be completely unprepared for the idea that they're going to have to go and show you the work. Have you noticed that? I don't know if you've noticed that. What do you mean, like well, they? They may have their portfolio, a large portion of it online, but and then, then it's like, like it's like that whole idea just hit them as they sat down. Like, how you know? do I actually get them? Yeah, to look no it? ability. Like they haven't thought about getting online, or they haven't really <laughs> even opened their laptop. You know, yeah. there's just things like that. Yeah. That, that are sometimes. Like if we didn't have internet, it wouldn't work out. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so well, people show up now. It. It's re weird for me because they'll walk in and they'll have nothing, you know. And it is a weird, like a transition than what I I, I used to have yeah. to like get things prepared and be the one. And now it's like yeah. they'll sit down. Yeah. And they'll and I'll be like, cool. So I do think you've you got to think about that now because you know, in back back in the day, it was all about the portfolio. It was all about these yeah. physical pieces. People would go to great lengths to create physicality that was different. Some books were covered with fur and others were chrome and all sorts of stuff and now that's not necessarily the, it's not the way um, and and so but what are you going to what are you going to provide that has physicality yeah even even with our our so so with a client that that we would work with the, like um, American Express American Express has a thousand different bullet points of what they offer if you have American Express yeah but but it for consumers it always drives down to the card like they they need the physicality of the card you could you could operate without the card in in most of your American Express dealings but but they still use that as a yeah. symbol right so you know I just wonder if you're gonna have a URL if you're gonna have is there something you leave people is there a way you go in because that physicality is just a human yeah it's part of the human condition we want to touch something we want to you know rub it we want to we want to have it sit somewhere so it reminds us of this person you yeah. know and we need we need those symbols so although you could you could do everything virtually i think what's what you have to think about is it's so easy for you to disappear if that's what what you do yeah right so then you're 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 your one email in the inbox your one link that's been looked at when the email's deleted, you're completely gone. And you, you know, when we, when you do a real book, you also you have to be thoughtful of kind of like which pieces you put where and what do you want to kind of oh. end on. And I feel like with links, sometimes you just, oh, what? No, that no, keep going. That just brought up another question. Yeah, it's just you don't really know where to look. It's it's not an experience that you can, you know, you're shaping. Yeah. And so you're leaving it kind of to be interpreted and to not really get what you were kind of intending as the experience to be. Yeah, I know when we're in presentations, they, yeah. it's important when we're showing clients work, we start with this, we, we order it, we don't just have a pile of work and then whatever comes up even in the see. Even in the simplest things where we put together a reel, right? And the reel is, you know, maybe it's just commercials. Yeah. The order is really critical. So, I mean, that was another question that came up a lot and it's come up again here. Best order for work in a book strongest to weakest question mark um, I have an I have an opinion it's not so much stronger to strongest to weakest to me I think you got to take people on a ride right yeah so if we're doing if we're doing a reel I'll pair um, really like somber work and then right after that I come in with something pretty funny right because there's a contrast there and, it, and that contrast makes the funnier funnier and then, but I won't go super funny right after some, like if I had like a truth spot, I wouldn't go super funny in the next spot. I'd go pretty funny. And you go, that's pretty funny. And then after... Probably pre seems way funnier too then. And it seems funnier <laughs> with a contrast. And then once you, and then once I've got in the world of a little funny, I'd go really funny, right? And then probably spend a little bit of time in there, maybe do two in that really funny area. And then I just slam you with something really serious because you're up here and then I take you all the way down. Yeah. So like that ride, that emo emotional roller coaster, you can take people on. I would look at the portfolio in the same way, you know. So so that y you think that I'm this, and then boom, I give you this. Yeah. And then and then I'm able to leverage off of that <laughs> and take you to this place that you didn't didn't realize we were going to go to. Yeah. And you you may not have that kind of portfolio, but um, you may not have those sorts of pieces. 
So there may be another way, again, with the narrative to take people, you know, on a, on a ride. What do you think about, um, I know some people were asking about, you know, um, pro bono type clients, you know, that you do in your book yeah. versus like real, like the size of clients and... I think we have time for two more questions, so we can... Um, okay, should we go to questions then maybe? I no, I think, I, think we're, I think we're good. So pro, pro bono is a, is a good question. Yeah, like I'm looking at what's in Seneca um, from Ryan Zur, and it was just, you know, Thank a matter you, of... And it, it's a range of clients. Like when, you know, do you go with things that people know always versus not? Do you go with stuff that's, you know, emotional and pro bono versus funny? Like yeah. how do you pick clients You've got to just realize you? that I think that the, the thing about a book is everything communicates. Yeah. Right? So if you have all pro bono in your book, that communicates something. It doesn't just communicate what you've selected or you know what assignments you did good work on. It also communicates that I maybe don't want to work on brands, yeah. right? And if that's where you're at, then it's a really good thing to do. Yeah. If that's not where you're at, then it would be a mistake in the book, right? Mm -hmm. So if you only want to work on pro bono, do an all pro bono um, yeah. portfolio. I tried to pick like when I did H and R Block. I was like, "What you know? How can I make an H and R Block ad something I want to do?" Right. Because it seems like a real client I'll probably end up getting. But I, right. I wanted to prove that I could still have fun with it and yeah. do something that I enjoy doing. And I think that you know when you can take when you can take real brands yeah. instead of I think real brands are good because they do two things. One is they have shorthand. When you're when you're when you're when you're in a small agency and in, in, uh, in another in a small market. You work on a lot of stuff that takes explaining. You have to explain yeah. the brands. Even even as you're trying to do creative, like as we tried to break out of the small market. So you market, have to do different work. You have to do different work. And, and sometimes it, it's it's just a little bit harder because you don't have the short hand of, oh, this brand means that. H&R Block, I know what that means. Yeah. Right? So I think as you're putting together a student portfolio, it's better to choose brands that people are familiar with. But then you got to be careful not to just do all of the usual suspects, yeah. you know, don't just do preparation, preparation H, a condom, yeah. uh, you know, like, like give yourself a challenge within that and do an insurance company and do a tax company, and, yeah. you know, so stuff we know, but stuff that maybe hasn't been in every portfolio. Yeah. I think like too much condom work can be a problem too. But you one know? really great condom ad like that one that just I came think out. one is good. Squeaky. Yeah, one, one, con one condom ad is probably the most per per book <laughs> and then if you have a condom and uh what it, like some sort of like lubricant could go along with it <laughs> it's like it's, you're starting to stretch it like so now your book has said okay really into sex yeah right if you want to say i'm really into sex then <laughs> you could do that but you know i think that you know the bottom line is every aspect of your book from the from the case to the url to the email to the to the to the order that it's in, to the way it's presented, to the amount of finish, every little, every bit is communicating, and you just want to, you know, make sure that that communication. Just analyze all those pieces and say, is it communicating what I want it to communicate? Yeah. And if it's not, change it. And if it is, you're right on track. So that's that's, that's it. everything, right? That's everything. That's <sighs> it for this uh, this. Um, and I'll try to get back some of these uh, some comments to some of these books. I don't even know who we're having on next week. I think it might be Rob Riley, um, who is going to move from at, from a cardboard character and a poster. behind the scenes. He's going to move in front. And uh, well, you should I think animate him. Just someone for the show. else will guest host Rob Riley's show. So there'll be a different cardboard cutout back there. Um, so that's that's it from us. We'll Thanks see you guys. Thanks for having me. Yeah, excellent job. Thank I you. I didn't drink my tea at all. Great. Oh, wow. It's a bladder buster of a show. <laughs> One hour. You got to purge before you get going. <laughs> We're done. We'll see you.